Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Baptiste from the French team, and this is our work on the spinning washer. So what's the problem? If uh, you take a washer, which is this uh, ring-like object, and you spin it around the rod, it may uh, keep on spinning instead of just sliding down, and it works for both uh, smooth and threaded rods, as you can see. And the question is, um, is there a sliding spinning transition? Is the motion stable? And if so, what's the terminal velocity? So uh, this is our experimental setup. So we have um, a bunch of rod and, and washers. So basically every uh, washers we could find on the uh, lab shelves. And as I said, the rods can be either uh, smooth or, th or threaded and they are vertically attached uh, and we use a camera for recording. So uh, assuming the washer is a thin hollow cylinder, it's uh, fully defined by its mass, its inner and outer radii and the thickness and the rod is uh, defined by its radius and the thread shape if threaded and the rod washer friction is also important. So let's right away answer the first question. Yes, the motion is stable. As you can see here, one curve corresponds to one experiment, so one washer and one rod. And for different experiments, we have a uh, constant falling velocity uh, as a function of time. So uh, the washers reach a steady state. But the real question is why? And we will investigate the fundamental role of gravity and friction. So uh, the center of mass is marked by G and in cylindrical coordinates, uh, it's marked by uh, rho and gamma and Z. And theta is uh, the tilt angle. So about theta, we want to know the maximum tilt angle of our washers. Uh, and the reason for that is we want to know if there are one or two contact points and what are the coordinates, because that's where the reaction force is exerted. Um, so uh, as you can see, uh, for a fully tilted washer, um, the angle is the, the maximum angle. And um, this is our experimental results for both uh, threaded and smooth rods. So you can see that the, the, the washer is always fully tilted, so two contact points. And for the smooth, smooth rods, sorry, um, they're also fully uh, shifted sideways. So the, the displacement of the center of mass is uh, huge. So, now the rolling without sliding uh, condition. It is important because it links um, uh, two angular velocities, the gamma dots, so the precession of the center of mass uh, around the center of the rod, and the uh, eigen velocity around the, along the main axis of symmetry, which is uh, phi dots. So for a given rod, we plotted um, the, um, the ratio between velocities uh, for different washers as a function of the radius. So as you can see, this corresponds to rolling without slipping. And uh, this area corresponds to slipping. So uh, with the, our experiments results, we can uh, conclude that there is almost no slipping involved in the motions. And actually, it's the same for threaded rods. OK, so now um, uh, let's investigate the sliding spinning transition. So um, in other words, we want to know how we go from initial conditions to uh, the steady state uh, on the right side. So there are many ways to spin washers. But the main scenario is uh, this. This is what we obtain most of the time. So a spinning at constant altitude. So um, we are us using, sorry, um, Coulomb laws of dry friction, which relates the, um, the uh, normal force um, at the, the contact point and the friction force of the, the tangential forces um, along the horizontal and vertical axis. And in this case, because normal reaction opposes centrifugal force and not just weights, it actually depends on angular velocity. And this is not common because we are used uh, in dry friction to problems where it doesn't depend on velocity, on linear velocity. But here, it depends on angular velocity through uh, centrifugal force. So we solve the equations, um, uh, the Newton second law, and this gives us a um, differential equation um, that we can solve analytically and a condition on the uh, vertical axis for non-slipping. So uh, this is um, our model prediction. So the, um, the angular velocity of the washer will um, decrease and reach this uh, threshold value underneath which it starts uh, sliding. And, um, and then interesting things are gonna happen. So this is our experimental results. Uh, as you can see, there is the slowdown part that we uh, uh, predicted. And then it starts uh, sliding, tilting. Uh, it touches uh, the other side of the, the rod and it starts accelerating towards the, stop, the, the steady state. And an interesting point here is that the steady state, the angular velocity in the steady state is actually above the threshold value. So that means that there is no, in the steady state, there is no um, uh, uh, vertical sliding. So that's very really interesting. So let's uh, watch the, the transition. So slow down, tilting, shaking, 
and accelerations towards um, the steady state. Okay, so that was for, for smooth roads, for threaded roads, um, even though the geometry is much more complicated, actually the results is uh, quite surprising because as you can see, um, we tried for different initial conditions. So with initial uh, angular velocity, no initial angular velocity and initial velocity, but in the other um, direction. And they all reach the same um, steady state. And the, um, the reason for that is that the, the, the thread on the rod breaks the symmetry of the rod and only one direction of rotation is allowed. So as you can see, uh, the green curve, so the washer is slowing down, stopping, uh, accelerating in the other direction and reaches the, the steady state. So here's a video of the transition for no initial velocity. So at each um, impact, uh, a bit chaotic on the, on the rod, it gains angular velocity in a chaotic way and it reaches the steady state. So now we're in the steady state. We can write the angular momentum of, um, of uh, the washer um, and in the body fixed frame, it's very convenient because the values are constant and um, only, there are only two eigenvalues. Uh, and the rotation vector uh, can be projected as well using the rolling without slipping conditions and all the things we uh, investigated before to know the Z component. Um, and here um, we want to explain the, the, the origin um, of the uh, terminal angular velocity. And I think this is the main takeaway of this presentation is that uh, we have the same equation as before, but now uh, on a qualitative point of view, we have a new a term proportional to gravity that uh, accelerates uh, angular velocity. And this is analogous here to a free fall with a friction, uh, air friction force. The reason for that is that um, in a free fall motion, gravity uh, accelerates uh, um, in a linear acceleration and air friction increases with linear velocity. So we reach a steady state. And here, gravity accelerates um, uh, the angular velocity and dry friction increases with angular velocity, as we show. So both um, regimes uh, reach a, a terminal velocity, angular in our case. That's very important because gravity provides, uh, because we are in this uh, very particular uh, position of the washer, um, provides angular acceleration. So now about the uh, terminal falling velocity um, for smooth rods. Uh, the hypothesis is that there is no vertical sliding as we uh, demonstrated before, but here um, the terminal velocity is fully determined by uh, the angular velocity because actually the contact points follow a, um, um, a fictive um, uh, spiral path. So um, we can uh, know the uh, terminal velocity uh, just by knowing the angular velocity in the steady state uh, by calculating the slope. And uh, the experimental results uh, are really in good agreement with uh, our uh, prediction. And uh, the terminal falling velocity for the threaded rods is actually much simpler because the helical path is not fictive, it's actually just the thread. So the, the washers follow the pitch of the thread. And of course, we have an excellent agreement um, because after one revolution, the, the washer uh, just goes down from one uh, value of the pitch. Um, so to conclude, um, all those washers have um, original motions with uh, singular characteristics. Uh, we studied both smooth and threaded rods uh, to understand all the physics. And we understood uh, the sliding spinning transition and the role of initial conditions. And we gave a quantitative explanation for the terminal angular velocity and uh, a quantitative model for the steady state, um, for the falling uh, steady state, so the terminal falling velocity. And actually in the steady state, um, we uh, saw that for smooth rods, particularly, um, the rod can actually vibrate um, and this vibration provides some kind of hula hoop effect that slows the, the, the downward uh, sliding and um, it could be a very interesting topic for further investigation. Thank you. Uh, so hi everyone, one more time, I'm Ivan Pachnowski, I'm a team captain of Germany and I would like to do the opposition to the problem number 11, uh, spinning washer. So we start with uh, a recapitulation of the problem statement. So the problem states a washer on a vertical steel route may start spinning instead of simply slide sliding down. And the problem was to study the motion of the washer to um, define the slide and spinning or transition and to determine the terminal velocity. So the reporter started with uh, a theoretical explanation. He described briefly the main um, 
the main impact of the problem. Then he showed us some uh, setups, the different washers, which he, which he has used and so on. After that, uh, he has compared experimental results with the uh, theoretical expectation. And according to the reporter, the theory meets uh, very good with the uh, uh, experimental setup. And in the end, he has also pro proposed uh, a calculation and summarizing for the another important parameters which may appear in this problem. So now uh, to some critique to uh, positive and negative points. As I, as I have already mentioned, the physical phenomenon was uh, briefly explained at the beginning. However, on the second slide, you showed us uh, different uh, graphs with the different washers. It was not very clear to me uh, what was the purpose of this graph because after that you moved to the uh, theoretical explanation and showed uh, another graphs. And for the first graph, I didn't get actually a point uh, which you want to set that. Uh, of course, you correctly recognize as a parameter defined as the terminal velocity and slipping conditions. So you define the different reduces of the washers. You also use different washers and different routes, which I found very, very important. But uh, actually, uh, you, um, you you showed us different washers with uh, different radiuses, and you said that the moment of inertia is also important. But you, you didn't show us any calculations, maybe for the same radius, but for the different masses of the washers. And on the other hand, we can also uh, um, makes the washer not only the circular one, because according to the uh, definition of washer, it uh, has not to be a circular one. So we can change it to the quadratic one or, or something like that. So in my opinion, it will be good uh, to investigate uh, another forms of, of washer. So in my opinion, an amount of experiments was uh, sufficient. So with this experiment, you can uh, verify the, that your theory meets very good with the experimental results. However, as I have already said during the clarifying questions, I really missed some errors calculations because you said that the errors uh, seems to be um, very small compared to the uh, point on the graph. Maybe it would be better to make this points a little bit smaller so that we can see that you actually calculate the errors or make some table or summarize uh, where, uh, where uh, was uh, the um, errors hiding. So in principle, you provide, uh, uh, you provide a direct comparison between the hypothesis and the experiment. So you plotted also a theoretical curve on the experimental results, which I found very good. Um, so there are some points which I want to discuss with you during the um, next step in our fight. So first, first of all, from the energetical point of view, I will be interested in the following questions. So the potential energy is transformed uh, to a three, uh, three different moments. So along the road, spin and oscillation, I would like to ask you to answer well, uh, which motion can uh, take like uh, the most part of the energy. Maybe this question could also ask answer your problem on the slide number 11, steady state velocity, because it was higher than before. Maybe we will come to this. Uh, maybe we can put some oil on the route to, to decrease the, fri the friction. Sorry, I have here some mistake, but it should be friction. Air friction, uh, you try to model this, but the question is, uh, is it important here or not? Consider different type of process, uh, not only a circular one, we can also discuss this. Moment of inertia is a mass important, as I've already said, to take the same radius by the different masses. And to the experimental, how come we define the thermal velocity and at which high one should start measuring? And another qu question, does the parallax effect from the camera is important? And is it a good idea to use some another equip equipment, uh, in principle, maybe tracker to model the, mo the motion uh, along the road? Yeah, so uh, we you. can start on the discussion. Yeah, hey, yeah so, thank you for all your questions and mm -hmm. all interesting remarks. So let's try to get all through. Yeah, all maybe this. we can start with the. Uh, first one. So in principle, from the energetic point of view, uh, I saw that you did like a very good equ equations for the motion. 
That's why I would like to ask you what do you think is uh, like more energetic important if we lose the kinetic energy, the energy is transferred to the spinning oscillation and going along the route. What do you think um, is important here? Yeah, so yeah, you're right. The, uh, the um, potential energy is fully um, transferred to the, to the friction, so in a non-conservative way. And friction is the, um, the force that uh, causes the, the torque, so the motion, uh, the spinning motion. So because uh, the spinning and the along the rod motion that you mentioned are coupled due to this helical, uh, helical uh, motion, um, it's fully transferred to spinning, actually, I mean, fully. Okay, so you mean that the friction is the most important one? Yes, of yeah. course, I agree with you too, too, because friction is, is defined the sliding and spinning condition. Uh, maybe we can put some oil on the road to decrease the friction. Do you think it could be a good idea or in this case, we cannot reach a slipping condition? Uh, yeah, so you're right. The, um, the the friction is important because, as you saw, maybe I, I can share my screen again. Yes. but I mean, sure. is it a good idea to to like to make the route more oily, so we can uh, maybe reach the higher velo velocity of the washer? Yeah, it, it could be. In, uh, we, we didn't do that. Um, okay. But, but think it's a good in, idea to uh, to yeah yeah. In, to investigate and this. Very simple to try, so I might try it just after the presentation. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe um, some question yeah. about the moment of inertia. So do you think it's important uh, to uh, set can, the can radius? You please, please, can you please just stop screen, sharing your screen so I can... You, yeah, you can... I mean, yes, of course. I've got in mind, but uh, I yeah, have yeah. some things yeah, to share. Free, okay. Uh, so yeah, just repeat your question, please. Um, so, uh, is it a good idea to put some oil on the roots so we can decrease the friction and um, does it have any impact of the uh, slide, slide and spinning condition? It was my question. Yeah, um, so you're right. Um, it's important to, for the vertical sliding because as you saw in the presentation that uh, I don't know if you can see. Um, the, the, in the steady state, you need to be uh, above the threshold uh, slipping value on the okay. vertical axis. Yeah, there is a, a threshold. So if uh, the friction coefficient, um, the, the static friction coefficient on the vertical axis uh, is lower, you will have a, a, a bigger uh, threshold value. So you may start uh, spinning, uh, sliding. Sorry. Okay. So you, you, you say that uh, put some oil may uh, decrease the friction and the slides in the slipping condition will take place on another angle. And the tilt angle is also... Oh, the tilt angle is always the, the, the maximal one. It's always uh, two contact points. So it's fully tilted all the time, as you can see here. It's, uh, uh, I'm not sure I, I, I fully understand the, your question, but you, there are a lot of okay. things to discuss, so maybe we... Yes, I got your point. Actually, we can move on another one. Uh, do you uh, think if we... Uh, takes a washer which has uh, some radius, so maybe was one centimeter and the inner radius will be a couple of millimeters. And then we take uh, the same form of the washer, but a different mass. Those yeah, the mass distribution is important, you're right. Uh, as you can see here, uh, yeah, here, you can see that um, the precession velocity, uh, so the, the, yeah, the, the, the velocity of the center of mass depends on inertia and it decreases with inertia. So we try the, um, for uh, threaded and smooth rods. And this is just a uh, qualitative, I mean, um, experimental results. This is just for- um, uh, Yes, so the, I have seen background. that you uh, took a different eigenvalues for the inertia, but my, what, but my question was to take like the same radius, but a different masses, because here I actually cannot see any theoretical or any statistical expectations, so the points are, are distributed very randomly, in my opinion. Um, uh, can you comment on this? Uh, I mean, I think my opinion is a bit different. Of course, there are some uh, okay. experimental bias, but the, the tendency is that it decreases with inertia, which is what we expect, because uh, the, the the more mass, the, the harder it is to spin. Yeah, maybe Thank you should you. Put, At yeah. the point, uh, we can also add other team members to the discussion so maybe you can also put here some arrows for the eigenvalues because you as i understood your 
you can yeah, change but, your mass I mean, and you measured your mass with some equipment. Yeah, you're, 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 you're right. Your... You're right, but the, 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 the error bars on the x-axis will be so small because we measure, to, to know the inertia, we measure um, the, we measure the mass uh, very precisely. We measure with a, um, a very precise way the uh, radii. So this is a very precise values compared okay. to the tracking of the precision velocity. Yes, exactly. So um, yeah, you, you're right about error bars, but they are really mm -hmm. relevant here. And about precession velocity, is it in your opinion a good idea to use some tracker program? Because you said that you made it like a by hand. Yeah. Uh, um, maybe uh, we can decrease uh, in this way some errors. The only difference, uh, in my opinion, is that it will be uh, faster and less tedious to do with a tracker. But actually, the by hand uh, tracking is more precise, I think, because a numerical error can, uh, can appear from. Um, from the, the, the program. So we prefer to do a by hand tracking because it's in our cases, as you, as you can see, the, the videos are in quite good resolution. So, uh, and the, the, the acquisition time is uh, very high. So it's a very precise uh, tracking as you saw at the beginning. Um, okay. You had another question about the, um, the, um, the quantitative appro approach of uh, the equations with inertia, et cetera. Um, maybe I, I, th I have something to show you. Maybe we can discuss on that. Sorry, I'm having a hard time um, finding the slide. Yeah, I, I keep uh, encouraging that other team members also can take part yeah, in so the discussion. Here. Either type to the chat or raise your hand and I will be able to give you my testimony. Yeah, so as you, as you can see here uh, for the, the threaded rods, um, the so here we were the, the, the equation here in the presentation, I just give a proportional term um, um, to remain qualitative for, for simplicity, but you can actually ca calculate the torque generated by the, the fact that the slope of the, the, uh, the spiral of the thread is, uh, has an angle. So the reaction force uh, exerts a torque and we can calculate it. And uh, here you can see that the, the, the terminal velocity, the terminal angular velocity depends on the inertia, on the, the two eigenvalues. And, um, Again, here we, we have a theory for uh, the um, steady state uh, angular velocity that uh, matches quite well experiment uh, within uh, some error bars. Okay, maybe some question on, on, on your experimental setup. So in principle, yeah. you let the washer going down and then at some point you, you started measurements. Uh, uh, yeah. Which right. high the washer did before you start uh, actually uh, the yeah. measurement? So, was um, it like oh, on the beginning or was it like at some uh, certain yeah. height? So in the, with the threaded rods, it's, it reaches a terminal motion quite uh, quickly. So we actually, um, we did um, uh, measurements. Uh, okay, and how did you define the terminal velo velocity actually? The, How the, the can you be sure that the velocity stays the, the same? Did you use some limitation or some tre thresholds? Uh, what do you mean remains the same? I mean, we so, we, we plot it, we, we track it for a certain amount of time and it is constant uh, on that amount of time. So we conclude that it's... So, uh, but I mean, if, if it's going up with some like a small linear uh, 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 curve, uh, is it uh, still the thermal velo uh, velocity or not? Uh, can you repeat, please? I so, get... in principle, you can measure like uh, several points, okay? Like yeah. five points. And you see that the three points are obviously at the same velo velocity, but the points yeah. four and five is a little bit higher. We didn't do this, this kind of... of um... Of measurements, which on, we only attract the, the center of mass. Okay. You have time for one small question, maybe? If you have any, again, it's already was five minutes for general teams discussion. Yeah, uh, I actually have, uh, my, if, I, if I may, a question for the, the opponent, because you, you mentioned the fact that we didn't use any kind of, any uh, different geometries. So we, we use washers that are like uh, hollow cylinders. Uh, but uh, you mentioned that we could use some other kind of washers. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious because we didn't do that. I'm curious um, uh, what could happen in this case because... I mean, in this case, uh, the moment of inertia uh, could be different in different directions, actually. And yeah. the moment of your washer will be not asymmetric according to uh, the route. 
And if you use a quadratic Borsha, because you can, I mean, you as a Borsha is defined like, it could be defined like a quadratic form. That's why it would be interesting to compare a quadratic form with a circular form. And maybe the, mo the moment will be pretty the same, but for me, yeah. So yeah, I didn't uh, make uh, such an experiment, but it, it came to my mind that it could be uh, a washer with a quadratic form. And then the equation of motion becomes uh, becomes actually very difficult. And maybe there are some uh, uh, some advantages of uh, using a quadratic washer. Maybe the thermal yeah. velocity will be bigger. Or... Okay, I, I hope we will discuss uh, that yeah, and maybe you. later. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. maybe thank later you. we have gathered down for such purposes. Now reporter have time for concluding remarks. Yeah, so uh, interesting subject. We have to investigate um, the different motions. And actually from experiment, there are a lot of motions that are possible, especially with smooth rod, because on threaded rods, the motion is kind of uh, forced. Um, so here, yeah, the, I think the main takeaway of this presentation is that um, we reach a terminal velocity and there is a very really tricky and a beautiful reason for that is that um, uh, the friction force depends on angular velocity, which is not a common thing. And I thank the the, uh, the opponent for all the relevant remarks on the arrow bars, on the, the, the more qu quantitative approach of the, the motion with uh, the, the influence of inertia and mass and different uh, geometries of washers. So, um, and the, the idea of maybe uh, changing the, the friction, uh, of course, is very relevant because it is a key parameter to the problem. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Th I thank again the, the opponent and uh, thank you all. Thank you, thank you, excellent. Uh, as an excuse. So my question is, uh, what is the acquisition speed? Uh, you all uh, mentioned, uh, is a question to the reporter. You mentioned several times that your acquisition speed is quite high, but how many frames per second or whatever? Between, but can you hear me? Yeah, uh, between 250 and 350, depends. So uh, 250, uh, 200. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 100 and uh, mm -hmm. 250 frames per second to 300, maybe. And then, if uh, uh, can you show me the slide number 28? 28. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your starting uh, rotation speed is uh, angular velocity is two eight 280 radians per second, which corresponds to 2.5 kilo rotations per minute. This is very, very high, yeah. Very high, but yeah. you, I mean, you are sure about it. Okay. Oh, I'm 100%, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, if, if we watch the, the videos here, they are slowed like uh, uh, 10 or more times. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you can see that the motion, if it works, yeah, the motion is still quite fast. And actually, if you try, you, you may try, the, there are washers and rods on all uh, lab shelves. You will see that it's very interesting and the motions, uh, it rotates very quickly. Uh, Okay, good. And, uh, okay. The, last, the last question, uh, short question. Short. Uh, you you said that you always spin the washer in the beginning, or did I take you incorrectly? Uh, for th for threaded rods, it's not as I as I proved. It's not necessary. But for smooth rods, of course, you need to inject uh, a uh, spinning motion at the beginning. Oh, if you don't, uh, it never works. Uh, no, if you don't, it, it just I mean, just lights. It, yeah, it just slides, uh, it just, sorry, here. It, it, just, it, slides. it just slides slides down if you don't spin it first, yeah. Let's okay. give Thank other, you. do you remember to ask questions, Dmitro, please ask your questions. Yes, so you have a slide where you compare for different kinds of washers, uh, experimental results with the calculation. Yep. Right, then um, you have shown the formula for the calculation. Uh, yes, for example, one, one of those. Uh, and then you have shown the formula for calculation where you have a uh, moment of inertia and you have the CRR, right? Yeah. So in the end, to compare theory to experiment, you have to measure friction, yeah. right? To substitute to the formula. How did you measure the friction? So yeah, uh, we measured it, but the thing is there are a, a different uh, friction coefficients uh, in, if you consider uh, uh, static friction, dynamic friction or rolling resistance. And 
Um, there are some values uh, in literature for rolling resistance, so the CRR, the rolling resistance coefficient, but actually uh, we decided to, to fit it, uh, as you can see here. So yeah, it's a bit of a mess, but we fitted the, the first part of the motion, which is the slowdown, and only depends, as you can see, on the initial uh, angular velocity and this rolling resistance coefficient. So we fitted uh, this value, and it's, um, it, it, it's coherent with um, values we can find uh, on literature. So, that's so you how fit we did it, it for every rod, like for, for every washer, right? Separately. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, and we, then we you also perfect. substitute it for every washer separately. Yeah. Okay. I see. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Right. It, it took some time. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, Matteo, now your question. Okay. Can you hear me properly? Yes. This time? Yes. Yes. Thanks. Um, yeah, so it's the first time I, I see this problem, and um, it's nice that you're on this slide because you say there's this slowdown and the, the transition to the steady states. Um, is it always the case that you arrive to these steady states, or can you have different co initial conditions that would give you um, different kind of physics? Yeah, so uh, thanks for the question. Um, so you can see that for, for the, I, I mean, you, I, I think you mean for the smooth rods because that's the most um, complicated one. So, yeah. Um, we explain this transition, but actually, yeah, if you spin it in uh, another way, m too slowly or maybe very quickly, a lot of things can happen. It can go up and then slide down. It can still remain at this uh, no tilt uh, motion and just slide down because our model is very sim uh, simple and it doesn't take into account the fact that there are not only one contact point, but it can be a surface if the, the washer is a very smooth uh, cylinder. So. Many things can happen, and I uh, encourage you, you all to try because it's fun. <laughs> but yeah, um, we only explained uh, uh, what happens most of the time, which is uh, this um, this motion. So, I, so I would, in sorry. your experiments, you would like give it sm a small tilt at the start to ensure yeah. that you would get this right. Yes. And then have you investigated like kind of qualitative or heuristical ways of making sure this happens, like? Um, uh, um, yeah, so it, it really it really depends on um, on the parameters, but we don't have a quantitative approach for that. Only as we, as I said, um, the washer needs to stick to the, the the rod and tilt in order to put itself in the motion of the steady state with two contact points and a, a center of mass fully shifted, and it does it uh, on its own, as, as I saw on the video, as you can see on the video. But um, we, we did not uh, like. Uh, did all of our experiments with the same perfect initial conditions. But as they all reach the same steady state all the time, I mean, for a given Russian and a given rod, the steady state is the same all the time. So we didn't spend too much time on the initial conditions. OK, thanks. I, I guess I don't have more time for the question. Let's, let's give right Alexander ask his question. Alexander, far away. Okay. Uh, I have two questions. So the first one. Uh, does any washer uh, could reach their steady uh, motion, or there are some conditions you need? Um, yeah, so there is the uh, vertical sticking condition, as I said. So if you have uh, too much, uh, I mean, if the friction is uh, too low. I mean, I mean about not on more on the but about more on the on the geometry of washer, like the washer uh, with the radius of kilometer will treat. In, 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 in a radius of kilometer, won't reach steady state, of course, it will fall on up, fall on up. But uh, I mean about more reasonable condition. Uh, 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 yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, interesting question. I don't think, uh, no, I don't really know. I, I think so, but uh, I, I don't. May I uh, try to answer on that? Do you want to hear the reply from the opponent? Uh, probably. Mm. Okay, let it let it be. Let it be fast. <laughs> if you not want want to hear it, I will keep it for me, of course. But I mean, uh, the radius oh, no, of the please. the inner radius of the washer should be, of course, has to be bigger than the radius of the root. And at the beginning of the motion, you should flip it a little bit because if the radius is a little bit higher than the root, and you let it move like uh, here, like so, without any flipping, it will fall down. So you, you need Still, some, uh, some interaction point. You need at least I'm, some I'm, interaction. I'm sorry for interrupting you, but uh, uh, due to the Landau uh, approach, you will have the inner radius like one kilometer and the 
a long, long route. Our uh, washer won't reach probably uh, uh, steady state, it will yeah, just fall. Like so uh, there should be some critical radius, as, uh, as I said. Actually, um, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, oh? do, uh, if you only look at the equations, you don't have any, uh, I mean, it, it would work uh, providing you have a very high, um, uh, the, the terminal velocity would be really high, so it would take a lot an amount of energy to reach the steady state for a kilometer size um, uh, uh, washer, but there is nothing um, contradicting the fact that it could not happen. I, I, I would stop it here. Yes, thank, thank you. you. I would stop thank it here. You.